Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 14th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remember, it's a double patch Tuesday. Today we should expect the February and the March patches being released today by Microsoft in addition to the usual updates from Adobe and likely others. Jim today re-released his 6.py tool. It's a tool that uh, pretty simply just uh, calculates hashes for a binary, but uh, now he added support for SHA-3. Now, SHA-3 support isn't typically included in standard libraries, so you have to make sure that you are installing the SHA-3 Python library, which I believe is only available for more recent versions of Python, like 3.6 and larger. And just as a reminder, because I don't really hear a lot of talk about this, the Apache Struts 2 vulnerability, it's still out there and it's very aggressively being probed. I saw a couple of Perl bots uh, that uh, were attempted to be installed in our honeypot uh, earlier uh, today. Also, the Canada Revenue Agency had to shut down its website over attacks using this particular vulnerability. They should have it patched. Now, if you do have any kind of web application firewall, it shouldn't be too difficult to block these attacks. Please uh, consult with your vendor uh, to make sure that you get this right. At this point, if you find an unpatched and unprotected site, you probably have to assume that it is already compromised. I mentioned last week about the Nintendo Switch using a WebKit-based browser in order to allow the user to interact with captive Wi-Fi portals. Well, we got the first exploit now taking advantage of it. Turns out that the particular version of WebKit being used by the Nintendo Switch is quite old. It corresponds to iOS 9.3 and there are exploits available that just have to be adapted for the Nintendo Switch. First step is explained in an interesting video. If you're into writing exploits and really want to understand how they work, this video is a great introduction in how this particular exploit can be made work for the Nintendo Switch. Essentially what they're doing here is that they're adapting an exploit that was used to jailbreak iOS 9.3 using this same vulnerability and make this exploit work in order to be able to read and write files to the Nintendo Switch. In the last couple years, software component security has really sort of gotten at least a little bit more attention than usual. Usually it refers to the use of libraries and languages and the like uh, that you may have installed on a server in particular when you're talking about web applications. Well, uh, one other part of this is also code that you load into the client. And here in particular, various JavaScript libraries that you may be using, things like jQuery or modernizer or bootstrap well uh, of course sometimes uh, these libraries have vulnerabilities too usually vulnerabilities that more affect the client things like cross-site scripting and cross-site request forging vulnerabilities a study by researchers of Northeastern University now uh, looked at that problem and uh, what they found is that among the 133,000 websites that they checked, 37% did include at least one library with a known vulnerability. Of course, in some ways, it's easier to find these kind of vulnerabilities than your classic server-side vulnerabilities like SQL injection and the like, because in this case, you as a client actually download the complete code and then can scan it for vulnerabilities or for known vulnerable versions. And for enterprises, GitHub offers as an option to integrate with SAML authentication servers that you may want to use to authenticate your users. Well, a SAML isn't easy to get right. We have seen that, for example, Microsoft last year had issues with exactly the same problem. Needless to say, GitHub didn't get it quite right either. There are two vulnerabilities that were identified by a researcher 
in GitHub's implementation of SAML that could lead to a complete authentication bypass. Luckily, he reported it to GitHub via their bug bounty and GitHub has fixed it now. I still recommend that you read the write-up for these vulnerabilities if you ever have to implement SAML yourself. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And by the way, we now also have an iOS app for this podcast. So if you're interested in that mode of listening to the podcast, feel free to download it. Of course, you can also do so directly from the iOS podcast application. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.